Come 1918, color film was not up to recording this great difference in brightness between parts of the corona, nor of capturing the colors of the corona. So astronomers could see it, but they felt somewhat frustrated because they couldn't record it. So one amateur astronomer, a man named Edward Adams, who was going with an eclipse expedition in 1918 to Oregon, was a trustee of the Metropolitan Museum in New York, new artists in the art world. So he commissioned Mr. Butler to join the expedition as sort of artist in resident, as it were. And, uh, and Mr. Butler prepared himself with, oh, maybe 10 dry runs. What he stressed was he was going to capture what the human eye saw. Comes the day and a Navy officer is counting down the seconds to the eclipse. As a three, two, one, go, Butler turns with his dark adapted eyes and there is an eclipse of the sun. He's never seen it. But he very quickly makes shorthand notes of the shapes, the colors, the nuances, the striations recorded all this in about two minutes or so. Then, while it was fresh in his memory, he painted the first of his eclipse paintings. And the astronomers who were there on the expedition said that he had captured a, an extremely good likeness of the eclipse. It was just what they had seen and remembered. His interest was principally as an artist trying to capture this because not that much was known about the physics, the science. Of the, of the solar phenomena. He then went to another eclipse in 1923, which was in California. And he was very lucky because the astronomers he had normally worked with had gone to the south, to San Diego and to Baja California, to Ensenada. They got rained out. He, Mr. Butler, by himself, went up a bit north of Santa Barbara had relatively clear skies, saw the eclipse through some clouds, but was able to make some good sketches and caught a dramatic moment that just as the eclipse ended, the first bit of the sun began to shine between two mountain peaks on the edge of the moon. And you got this spot of light called a Bailey bead, which gives a sort of what they call a diamond ring effect. And he caught that in the painting, making his 1923 painting even more dramatic. Then 1925 came, he went to Connecticut and joined a group of astronomers who were there in Middletown, but actually went off by himself. Now he knew what to expect. He prepared himself, went on the roof of a hotel, proceeded to paint that, the 1925 eclipse. Then in 1932, an eclipse came to him. And rather than have to travel halfway across the country to see the eclipse, he simply went to his summer cottage in York, Maine, on the coast. And uh, the path of totality of the eclipse passed right over his cottage. This path is maybe 50 or 100 miles wide. And only if you're within that path do you see a total eclipse. So Mr. Butler's cottage was right within that path. He could paint the eclipse from his own front yard, as it were, and that became his fourth eclipse. The first three, however, had become the famous triptych, which was the one that hung over the door of the uh, Hayden Planetarium in New York for many years. 